brother on the platform for a first time. Brother, introduce yourself and let the people know, you know, what you bring to, to what you about, brother. Okay, my name is George Xavier Love. I'm a licensed acupuncture physician, a doctor of oriental medicine. I'm a Qigong master, and more importantly, I'm a prince priest of Imhotep under the shrine of Ptah Sekhmet Imhotep. So I bring the ancient knowledge into the modern world. My forte is medical Qigong. So we're talking about exercises that work through acupuncture meridians. So there's certain movements that you make that are actually healing. And as part of our cultural heritage, so we like to dance. So what I've done is taken these movements, I've sped them up to music and created dances that not only heal you, but teach you about anatomy, physiology, how the heart works, how the lungs work, how to purify the blood, and most importantly, how to heal your digestive system and detox. So, all right, when, when you talk like this, a lot of people think this is some Asian stuff. This is not African stuff. So um, what made you get involved in what most people will call the Asian practices? Well, I'm so glad you brought that up. I graduated acupuncture school in 1981. I opened up my first office, 125th and Lenox. The brothers walked into my office and said, brother, why are you doing Chinese medicine? How come you're not doing African medicine? Blew me away. I never heard of African medicine, so now I gotta do the research. The first person I run into is a brother from Morocco. He takes me to the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. He's a shaman, and I learn about African medicine firsthand. Then I meet Dirch Bakakwete, another shaman from Togo. I go to Togo for two months to study African medicine with him. Then I learn about Mami Wata, which is another counterpart to Yemaya. And I learn about African medicine from the water spirit tradition. So now, as I continue my studies in Asian medicine, I find out that Tibet reconnected all of the roots from ancient Egypt, from Persia, from Greece, to Rome, back to Tibet. So we know that the ancient Egyptians are no longer with us. But Tibetan medicine is a living tradition which is the reconnection, the conglomeration of our ancient African medicine. Is Qigong and acupuncture, is it one of those things that works for some people and doesn't work for others? It works for everybody. The basis of our medicine is the circulation of Qi, which is electromagnetic energy that flows through the blood. So the chi and the blood flow together, the chi moves the blood, and the blood pumps the heart, which is counterintuitive because we think the heart pumps the blood. But if you hear some slamming music, does your blood pressure go up? Does your heart rate increase? And if you hear some really sad violin music, does your blood pressure go down and your heart rate decrease? So how did your heart hear the music. Your ear heard the music, translated into a wave that went into your ear, and then from the ear it translated into the blood. So the blood actually pumps the heart. And that means it works for everybody. Well, what's, a, what's something we could do on an everyday basis to get this chi flowing, to get the blood flowing? Okay, now, when you go to bed at night, typically you're tired and your breathing is a little bit fast. During the night, your body supposedly relaxes, your spine elongates, your breathing slows down, your heart rate slows down. So in the morning when you wake up, you wake up refreshed. You are full of chi that you've been collecting during the night. During the day, you deplete your chi by running around doing this, doing that, and not eating properly, and not breathing properly. So, one of the ways is breathing, and then meditation, and then internal exercise, and then self-massage, and then foods, and then herbs. And this is our step-down approach to conserve, 
create and circulate chi so you will have more physical energy and more mental focus. That, that that's some good stuff. I think we live in a day today in today's age, man. Everybody works so hard that they, they they're too tired to even after they get off their jobs, they're too tired to even try to attempt to be an entrepreneur or to do, you know, other stuff besides take a shower, eat and then go to bed. So it's like excuses, excuses, excuses. <laughs> we'll not have them. Yeah. If you lived in Africa, that would not be an excuse. They get up at midnight and start working out. They take a nap from between 8 and 10, they get up and they keep rolling. There's no excuses, brother, for allowing circumstances to detract you or deter you from your declared goal. And Qigong will help you do that. What did you, what, what, what did you think about Bruce Lee as far as what he brought to the table? Bruce Lee opened a door. He opened a glimpse. His life was so short. He died at 33. He started at 22. So he was only with us for 11 years. And we didn't even pay attention till the last five years. So you have to work backwards. You have to reread his, his words. You have to look at his diagrams. You have to understand his philosophy. His number one student, Dan Inosanto, is still on the planet. He's still in LA, still teaching. And you can still learn the way of Bruce Lee through Dan Inosanto. Let me ask you, on YouTube, there's, there's videos out that some people think is fake where a person doing Qigong or uh, uses like, you know, he'll use like something in his hand, an uh, invisible power, and he'll knock down like five, six people. Is that, is that real or is that, is that fake? Is, you know, is that, a, you know, you could knock down five people by just putting your hands in the air and, and, and hitting them with an invisible, you know, force? Is, is that real? It is real, but some of the people who are demonstrating it are fake. Mm. So you have to know, you have to learn, and then you can spot the real from the fake. So my master, Master Li Bing Wan from Beijing, I was with him every day for six years. He knew how to sink his chi and how to create what we call Peng, P-E-N-G, which is a force that could move people without touching them. And that's a real thing. What's the ama most amazing thing you've seen somebody do with their chi, learning how to harness their chi? The most amazing thing I saw my teacher do was somebody came in with liver cancer and he said, point to where you think the tumor is. He did a 15 minute treatment. He said, go back to the hospital and tell them to x-ray your liver again. The next day the guy came back and said, they can't find the tumor. 15 minutes. That was the most amazing thing I ever saw. And that's why I dedicated my life to learning this healing method. Because cancer is killing our community. Lung cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, that's what's killing our community. Diabetic complications, that's what's killing our community. And that's what I'm focused on, is teaching the knowledge so you can prevent and reverse that. I don't want you to come to me. I live in Florida. I want to teach you how to do for self. And self-healing is the only way of preventive medicine. Well, what, what's some of the basics you would show us? Could you, could you demonstrate a little sign to us, some of the basics? Uh, I got to put the mic down because I need my hands. But I'm just going to tell you to go to my YouTube channel. Okay. YouTube.com slash Mystic Master 49. And I want you to look for, this is why I do Qigong. I want you to look for swing arms. And I want you to look for teacup Qigong. And those three videos will give you an intro, a very basic intro to the movements that you can use to heal yourself. Now, in terms of why, why does it appear that, you know, there's people that could do 600 push-ups, but if you ask them to meditate, they can't keep their body still. That seems to be harder than doing physical push-ups for some people. Why? You would think that's much easier than doing 600 push-ups. Why is it so hard to keep the body still? I'm so glad you asked me that. There's the physical energy, there's the heart energy, and there's the mind energy. We call it body, spirit, mind. Now, we're really good at working the body. We're not so good 
at work in the mind and we're severely lacking when it comes to work in the spirit okay so we have to start where you're at we start with the body and that's what we call awareness and then we connect you to your heart mind and then we elevate you to your spirit mind and your spirit mind is the breathing the meditation and the internal exercise and that's my starting point and we call that Shen Shen so Shen Chi so if you became my student I would start with your Shen and then I would bring you down to your heart and then I would tune your body in so so everything you see going on psychologically is that something that could be cured as well not just diseases like heart disease but psychologically our people ain't there right now that's the Shen that's what we call that's Shen right. disorder okay. okay okay your mind is not right uh -huh. okay the mind that made you sick is not the mind that can make you well you need a teacher uh -huh. And we don't like teachers. Uh -huh. We don't like gurus. We don't well, want to well, go every they, week. Been, we don't want to pay money for somebody to teach us how to take care of ourselves. And that's the only way you're going to get it. You can't get it out of a book. You can't get it from a video. If you take a class with me and then you watch the video, it'll make sense. Right. But if you watch the video without my personal instruction first, it won't click in your head. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And, and, and where, where, where you reside at now? Florida, brother? I'm in Florida, but I made a commitment to come up here every two or three months and drop science in Harlem and Brooklyn. So if you want to get at me, area code 561-502-6200. Or you can go to www.lovechinesemedicine.com. Okay, okay, man. Well, this is just an introduction to introduce you to the platform. Uh, you know, I'm sure the people are going to hit you up, contact you. And um, I definitely look forward to seeing you more often on here, brother. So, um, yeah, any, any last words you want to well, leave for the people? <clears throat> what I really want to do is reach the youth and the elders. And I created something called Chair Qigong for the elders, the people who have knee problems and back problems. They can sit on a chair or a stool, and I can teach them movements to heal their internal organs and to strengthen their joints. And then I have the Qi dance for the kids. And for kids, I mean anybody under 30. I think you fit in that category. <laughs> a little over 30, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Brother Rich, for, for having me on, and I hope I get to come back and teach more. Indeed, man. Definitely a pleasure having you on here, brother. I'm going to leave your information at the bottom in the description bar, anybody that want to get in touch with you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you here more often, brother. Okay, Brother Rich. All right, peace. Thank you. All right. Peace to you and yours, people. It's Brother Blue Pill reporting live and direct. We are in Harlem, USA, and I'm standing here with a legend. This is our brother, Dr. Love. Peace, Dr. Love. Peace, my brother. Thank you very much, Blue Pill. Now, we just finished a class of Tai Chi. Um, we are in the auspicious month of September, the end of September, mm -hmm. and just so happens we're a day removed out of the fall equinox. Now, I would like to speak to you about what is the importance of martial arts, either internal or, or external, on, on, on the season of fall, you know, as it applies to detoxing. Well, it is very auspicious that we're having this conversation during the fall equinox. Because that is the time when energy can go high or go low. So we need to do a cleansing because as the weather shifts from uh, the hot damp of the late summer into the cool dry of the early autumn, we need to clean out to prepare our bodies for the new food that's coming. So typically we do a three to a seven day juice feast. Now I'm clear about saying feast and not fast because yes. we can feast on carrot, celery, beet, ginger, and turmeric. And those juices allow the spleen, the liver, and the kidneys to take a break to get rid of the accumulated toxins. And by cleaning out the digestive system, we can then prepare it for the fall food. Right, so what body organ is synonymous with fall and the cleansing that needs to take place? 
Well, the fall organ is the large intestine and the lung. Because the wind starts in September, it starts to get really windy, the leaves fall off the trees, and the wind enables the leaves to fall. So the lungs are going to be affected, and we call that changeability. So we want the lungs to be strengthened so it can deal with the shift from the warm to the cool air. By the same token, the large intestine is uh, used to having fruit. So in late summer, we're doing a lot of mangoes, a lot of watermelons, peaches, and pears. So now we're transitioning to soups and stews and corn and lentils. So that type of food, we need to clean out the large intestine in order to prepare for that new food as well. Right. Now, can you talk about the integral system of Tai Chi? You know, why is the body movements important in regards, uh, in addition, should I say, to uh, certain diets, or I don't want to use the word diets, but food combinations that go along with, with the organs. Okay, so we call that nourishing energy. Okay? Yes. So, when you eat food, it takes a certain amount of time to digest. Mm -hmm. So fruits take 20 or 30 minutes to digest. Rice and beans take three or four hours to digest. Meat can take five to seven days to digest. So your food combining tells you how long it's going to take to digest the food. Now our large intestine is five to seven feet. Our small intestine is 18 to 20 feet. The stomach is 18 to 24 inches. So when you add up the esophagus, the stomach, the small and large intestine, it could be anywhere from 30 to 33 feet long, depending on how tall you are. So that food can get congested at any point. Now we have six sphincters in the body. So we have the throat, we have the bottom of the esophagus, which is the top of the stomach. We have the bottom of the stomach, which is the pyloric valve. Then we have the opening to the small intestines. Then we have the opening to the large intestines, what we call the ileocecal valve. Then we have the opening to the rectum, which is called the sigmoid colon. And then we actually have the rectus. So that's six ring muscles, six sphincters. Now, if we don't do Tai Chi Gong, if we don't do the exercise, then those ring muscles get lazy and we're unable to process the food through the intestines. And then we get diverticulitis, which is inflammation, and then we get diverticulosis, which is actually the tissue dying or necrosis. And the number one cancer in America is colorectal cancer. And that comes from not eating enough fiber, eating too fast, not chewing your food, and being dehydrated and not drinking enough water. So this is the time, this season right here, this fall season, is the time to take care of that. And that's why we drink hot teas. We do soups and stews to gently soothe the large intestine. And then when we do the three to seven day cleanse, you're going to take stool softeners like Cascara Sagrada. You're going to take Indian gooseberry fruit. You're going to take Trafala. So these are all mild laxatives that we're going to take to clean out the colon. And this is the right time to do it. Right, now in regards to fiber, where would you suggest people get their fiber from? Well, root vegetables, so pumpkin, squash, spaghetti squash. This is the season for the fall root vegetables and vine vegetables. So we have carrots, we have parsnips, uh, we have rutabagas, we have turnips. All these things are high fibrous foods that are in the produce section in the West Indian market and we should skip the major corporate markets and support our local produce markets. Now, you shared something with me the other day. It was very instrumental and monumental for me especially, and it was speaking about sleeping time. I want to speak about sleeping time and eating time because I'm around a lot of people that eat two in the morning, three in the morning, midnight, you know, mm -hmm. 
any time after the suggested cutoff time is when people are preparing meals, big meals. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then going to sleep three, four in the morning and waking up and wondering why things are semi-chaotic or why they're waking up to a chaotic world, which is a projection of their own inner verse. So can you speak on that? That is correct. Okay. So there's something called the orary cycle. It's a 24-hour body clock. Now, between 1 and 3 in the morning, most of the blood is in the liver. Between 3 and 5, it's in the lung. Between 5 and 7, it's in the large intestine. Between 7 and 9, it's in the stomach. Between 9 and 11, it's in the spleen. And between 11 and 1, it's in the heart. So let's break that down very simply. The liver is responsible for secreting melanin-stimulating hormone. MSH is responsible for all the hormones in the body. If there was no electric light and you went to bed 9, 30, 10 o'clock, at 1 in the morning your body would be well rested, the heart would be beating very slowly, and the body would be going through its cleansing process, and you're making MSH. Now, if you're staying up to 1, 2, 3, 4 in the morning, then your energy is now outer directed and you don't have the quality to manufacture the MSH, which is important for your hormones, and thereby your immune system, okay? Now, between three and five, most of the energy is in the lungs. That's when we're supposed to wake up and meditate for an hour and do our training exercise. Between five and seven, it's in the large intestine, that's when we have our morning dump. And between seven and nine, the energy is in the stomach, that's when we're breaking our fast. The spleen is responsible for digestion, so between 9 and 11, it's in the spleen. And between 11 and 1, the energy is in the heart. 50% of all heart attacks take place on Monday between 9 and 11. Mm. And that's worldwide. Now, is that when we should be working out, doing cardio between 11 and 1? You should be doing your cardio between 4 and 6 in the morning mm. to prepare so that the stress doesn't hit you between 11 and 1. Okay. okay. Now, it takes about five hours to empty your stomach. So if you eat dinner at 5, then 10 o'clock would you be your bedtime. If you eat dinner at 6, 11 is your bedtime. If you eat dinner at 7, midnight is your bedtime. If you're eating after 7 o'clock, you're disrupting the whole digestive system, okay? And then the quality of your hormones is gonna be diminished. Now, if you eat a big meal and then lay down, the stomach pushes up against the bottom of the heart. Now, if I grab your hand, even though you and I are friends, after about five minutes, you're gonna be like, Dr. Love, let go of my hand. Now, I'm not causing you any pain, but it's irritating for me to continue to hold your pain, hold your hand. So your stomach pushing up against the bottom of the heart irritates the heart, causing nightmares and disruption mm. of peaceful mental processes. Mm. So going to bed on a full stomach, not a good idea. Wow. Well, I mean, this information has been so very instrumental. Um, in my mind, I'm just seeing a lot of the uh, erratic behavior that, you know, not only I might be responsible for at one point or another, but I see in society and, you know, I, I, I'm just constantly reminded or I just know that not only with people, what they're eating is not only, not only is it not wholesome, but they're eating it at crazy hours. You know what I'm saying? The hormonal imbalance that we see in society, you know what I'm saying? Some of these children have grown up their entire lives eating after 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock fried foods at that, sitting on their stomachs and their body not being able to create proper hormones. Um, so this information is vital, you know. I want you to share the information with the family in regards to how they could get in contact with you to get some more of this vital life-altering information. Okay, the uh, website is uh, lovechinesemedicine.com, www.lovechinesemedicine.com. 
Uh, you can contact me there through, uh, through email. You can call me directly, area code 561-502-6200. 561-502-6200. So between the website and the phone, you should be able right. to get in touch. Are you on social media? I'm on Facebook as uh, Dr. George Love Oriental Medicine or Dr. Chi Love, Dr. Uh, D-R-Q-I. I'm on Twitter as uh, Dr. Chi, D-R-Q-I dash Love. And I'm on Instagram as the same way, D-R-Q-I dash Love. Right. Peace. Thank you for your time and more importantly for your information. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. Indeed. Peace. Greetings. I am Shree Master Gano Grills for the Underground Railroad Black Magic. It's very important that you don't take the laws of reciprocity lightly. I would like for all of you to donate what you can. Donate $20. Donate $100. Make it count. Make it hurt, because if you watched at least five videos and you have derived some sense of eloquence or some kind of benefit into your life, it's important that you restorate and you pay in and you support this channel. I know I do. And I want Brother Rich to continue to do the great work that he's doing. And it's important for all of us to come in and submit and help out the cause. Donate to the donate button. It's in the link. I'm Shree Master Gano Grills. And let's keep the good work going. Namaste.